Hey, and welcome back to Bounce Forward with me, Tip Hall. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm recording this podcast, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to elders, past and present. Kylie slid into my DMs and she asked me, how do you fight those sugar cravings when tired? With two littlies, age 39 and a demanding job, I'm finding it hard to find the energy to exercise. And whilst I eat well during the day, I seem to binge at night on chocolate and sweets when I'm overtired. I can't seem to find my motivation and so much self-sabotage. Your tips would be so appreciated. I've been with TXO for seven years. Oh my goodness, seven years. That's amazing. And I found it so much easier after the birth of my kids than I do now. Tiredness is killing me. Kylie, okay, let's talk about sugar cravings because we all experience them, especially after a stressful day at work or you've received some bad news or you're just feeling absolutely zapped with the kids. I get it. And I love my treats and I love bitter sugar. And I think it's so important to treat yourself and incorporate treats into your menu plan in life. But when there's too much sugar happening and you feel that it's self-sabotaging your your progress and what you're trying to get out of a goal, then you do need some tips to stop it. So my number one tip is to really add some spices. I love cooking with herbs and spices and they can turn a dish from zero to hero. It can't save you from a junk food binge, but it will make your food more satisfying and delicious. And it can have a lot of health benefits such as balancing your blood sugar and reducing those pesky sugar cravings. And that's what you want. You want to balance your blood sugar. So cooking with turmeric, basil, thyme, cinnamon. Cinnamon is a great sugar substitute as well. Then you really want to make sure you're getting the protein in during the day. You said you're pretty good during the day. So make sure you're setting yourself up for success by eating a protein-rich breakfast because it keeps you feeling fuller for longer. Mid-morning, don't have a biscuit and a cup of tea. You know, have some goat's cheese on some nice rice crackers or um, some Rivita biscuits or something like that. Um, You know, you really want to make sure that you're having a lot of protein, every meal, every snack. Even a breakfast smoothie could really be a great idea with some protein in there. Then I say like you've got to be prepared because sugar cravings can hit at any time. So I try to have, I bulk make bliss balls during the week or like a slice or something delicious. I've got like this chocolate dipped almond and pepita slice that I love. It's from my book Snack Power and I will bulk cook this stuff and have it with me so I can eat on the run and I never get stuck, you know, with a sugar craving. Sweeteners such as fruit, honey, maple syrup instead of refined sugar can be good. I'm not really a big fan of artificial sweeteners, but if they help you to get over a sugar craving short term and get into a better habit, then I'm like, go for it. Stevia is great. I love to challenge myself a little bit and I love to eat something sour to try and stop the sugar cravings. So, if you've had a few chockies and you want to eat the whole bag, the whole block, then just stop yourself by eating something like a grapefruit or a few spoonfuls of kimchi. It acts as anti-chocolate. Like eat a squeeze of fresh lemon in some water or a, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, which has some great gut health and digestion benefits. I also loved coconut oil pool. Swell some coconut oil around in your mouth for a couple of minutes. It keeps your mouth busy and it takes your mind off eating too many sugary snacks and it can actually clear your throat and your taste buds and recalibrate your mouth a little bit and it's a great little tooth whitener too I love it and then you've got to really focus on quality over quantity and ditch processed blocks of chocolate for example go for 80 percent cacao instead or enjoy your treats but make sure they're good quality and Cooking and batch cooking is really, really good. I say be 80% healthy, 20% treats. Make sure you put the treats into your meal plan so you don't feel deprived because deprivation will make those cravings even worse. And there's nothing wrong with 
being a little bit peckish, but maybe put the kettle on, have a peppermint tea. It helps reduce bloating and the scent of mint is known to help control your appetite and suppress cravings. So I always have a peppermint tea late at night, helps me to relax and there's less chance of like stress snacking. And then you got to keep moving. And I know I'm a PT, I'm a PT in your pocket because I've got my app and I'm always going to go for it. But exercise, a physical walk after dinner around the block, doing whatever you can, some lunges, whatever. It just takes your mind off the sugar craving. It releases endorphins for moving your body and you'll have more exercise satisfaction. You won't want to undo all your hard work you did in the exercise session by eating sugar. It's a proven theory. So Kylie, the other thing is if it's there in the house, you're going to eat it. And with small children, I find this myself. If I buy sugary snacky treats for my kids, I'll eat the kids' treats. Like I can't believe it. I'm like, what am I doing with this packet of three-year-old toddler snacks? Loving it. Sick. So you really need to talk to your partner. Hey, I'm struggling with sugar cravings. Let's not buy it. Let's not buy it for the kids. Let's not buy it for ourselves. Let's not have it in the house. I really need your support with this because, you know, sugar cravings, caving in, self-sabotage, not getting to your goals, it's all stuff that weighs heavily on your shoulders and it builds up and we don't want you getting unhappy and we don't want you not loving exercise or not enjoying food and, you know, feeling like you're trapped by this. So talk to your husband and let's get all the sugary snacks out of the house for the kids and for you. Liz wrote into me and she has a great question. Is muffin top a given once you hit the big 4-0? Think there's nothing you can do to combat the inevitable? Think again. Okay, some tips for training in your 40s. I'm going to go with that, all right? Because, yes, as we get older, our hormone balance shifts in ways that encourage weight gain, unfortunately. For example, testosterone and DHEA levels decline in men and women's insulin regulating hormones become less effective. It's so bad and very annoying. And these changes can decrease muscle mass, slow down your metabolism. And some reports say by about 2%, your metabolism slows down every decade after the age of 30. It also zap your energy while increasing belly fat, which you're talking about, the muffin top and insulin resistance. But it's not hopeless. The more we eat clean, live clean, work out, the better our hormone balance will be and the healthier our metabolisms will remain. So here are my top tips for like mastering weight loss and your metabolism beyond the age of 40. And I'm pretty passionate about this because in July I turn 40 and I'm just thinking about it all the time. So number one, you want to eat more protein. Loss of muscle due to age, it's inevitable but a great deal of its severity is dictated by diet and exercise. So protein can help this. One study found that men and women aged 70 and 79 who ate the most protein lost 40% less muscle mass than those who ate the least amount of protein. So muscle burns more calories, increases your insulin sensitivity, and keeps your testosterone production higher so that you can help stave off age-related health conditions such as metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and a loss of libido. So exercise is super important. You've got your protein. You want to eat your protein. That's my number one tip. My second tip is you want to exercise regularly and amp up the intensity. So people think, oh, I'm aging. I better go slow and be gentle. No, 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 no. You have to ramp up the intensity. I can't tell you how many people just let exercise slide as they get older and they they turn around and they blame their sluggish metabolism or their hormones, but your body needs exercise the way it needs oxygen and water. It's crucial to maintain muscle mass as you age. So a kilo of muscle burns three times more calories than a kilo of fat does. And muscle, it scoops up blood sugar and it enhances your body's insulin sensitivity. It's so important. So try to challenge yourself and intensify your workouts by adding 20 minutes of resistance training or by increasing the incline on your treadmill. The main point is just make it a little bit more intense. And then overall, you want to eat clean. 
Our metabolism gets damaged by chemicals and preservatives in our foods. So things like pesticides, growth hormones, trans fats, all have been linked to obesity. So you want to consume your foods in their most natural form. And I always say to you people, you've got to eat naked. And they freak out. I'm like, no, 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 eat naked, eat whole foods, eat things that aren't in packages, eat naked foods that you can cook. So the bottom line Your body definitely changes as you get older and there's no getting around that fact. Yet you can continue to exercise and eat whole real food. You will create an anti-aging process. You can do that. Age is only a number and I wouldn't worry about the muffin top. Focus on all the things you can do to keep your body hormonally happy in your 40s and that is eating your protein, intensifying your exercise, eating clean overall and also de-stressing and making sure that your mind is calm because that has a lot of hormonal impact as well. Thank you so much for listening to Bounce Forward. I love having your company, so please DM me on Instagram at tiffhall underscore XO and let me know what questions you'd love me to cover. Don't forget to rate and review me on your podcast app. Speak soon. Happy days.